Just like the New York Knicks, this screenshot of every advantage the Warriors have given up this year shows you the dubs could be better than their record. That said, blown leads aren't anything to write home about. I said coming into this year, the pickup of Dante DiVincenzo, the return of James Wiseman, plus the development of Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and Jordan Poole would make the Warriors even better than they were in their championship season. While JP and Kaminga have improved as of late, and Dante is the only dub bench player with a positive plus minus, for the most part, I was wrong about the 22-23 dubs. Steve Kerr has recently found a couple solid five-man units, but I think he's leaving Curry off for too long and that's hurting his rhythm. The nine-time champion between his time as a coach and a player maybe hasn't treated these regular season games with enough diligence, while I won't say he's gotten complacent. Regardless, assistant coach Mike Brown, who's turned the Kings into a powerhouse just an hour and a half down the road from the Bay Area in Sacktown, is proving to be a tragic loss for the Dubs coaching staff. Against Brooklyn, the Warriors blew another game where they had a five-point lead with under two minutes left, games which Draymond once said they never lose, as it's becoming very evident this currently 500 ball club isn't at a championship caliber level right now. Steph's hoping his buzz cut changes things, but he hasn't seemed to be in peak condition like he was following his last injury return, which was back at the start of 2022's playoffs. While Klay Thompson's been eighth in scoring during the month of January, at least he was coming into the game against Brooklyn, his shot selection has been questionable for a large portion of this year, including on Sunday night against the Nets. Thompson did state on the record that once the playoffs get here, he's got no concern, but if the Warriors don't start treating these last few months like it's do or die, win or go home, whatever cliche you want to use, the claims by some that this is still a championship caliber system won't come to fruition. The Dubs championship hangover is hurting bad right now. Is it permanent? And how can it be reversed with just 35 games left? and the Dubs facing the ninth toughest schedule remaining. There's been ongoing tension in the Warriors locker room since the bag bros Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins received their extensions and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson didn't. As for the Jordan Poole versus Draymond Green continuing saga, brothers fight and that's what happens sometimes. As Steve Kerr said, he's seen this happen many times, it just so happens TMZ got a hold of the footage. I was critical of Green when this happened because of course he was in the wrong, which he apologized for for 40 minutes doesn't make it right, but given this thumbnail directly after the beef happened, I never thought it was the massive deal that many news outlets made it out to be. Poole deserves better, obviously, and the kids persevered, albeit with sloppy games on the occasion. Nevertheless, his numbers have been really good as of late, with all the expectations that come with his contract. I think Jordan's managed them appropriately for the most part. Of course, casuals go back and forth between calling Poole good and overrated, whether he has a good or bad performance. I'm always on this kid's side, but we can't forget Poole doesn't even turn 24 years old for another half year. His development is going to be a roller coaster but Steve Kerr's performance in that aspect, in terms of developing Jordan, calling him out when need be, etc. Kerr's been good in that aspect, I think. The playbook is always solid, as the Warriors always get great motion, whether it's from SLOBs after timeouts, pitch slash dribble handoffs, split actions, or decoy sets where they can often exploit the backside of the opposing defense by getting their guys easy cuts or open lanes. That said, continuity-wise, I'm not gonna lie, I'm hungover right now. Let's have some trust, though, that the reigning champions, in some sense, I'm not going to say it'll result in a championship given all the contenders who've been playing well all season, but let's trust in some sense the Warriors will figure it out down the stretch given the veteran leadership. I thought Ty Jerome deserved to play a lot more minutes against Brooklyn. The man had it going offensively in the first half. That was a poor decision by Kerr to not put one of their most lethal options on the night who was cooking back in. To be fair, though, if the Warriors just close out the final two minutes against the Nets like they should have, we're probably sitting here breaking down footage of how they got it done, and everything would feel like smooth sailing. But it's that exact smooth sailing mentality with this Warriors ball club after achieving the ultimate glory last June, an achievement which really acts as either a catapult or a deterrent to said champion's career, is absolutely killing them right now. If I'm not gonna say Steve Kerr's been complacent, I'll say that from day one, at least since the media buzz surrounding the punch following the Tokyo trip, I'll say this Warrior team has been complacent, and to quote Drizzy, since the punch, nothing was the same. 
I'll stand on my word in saying I was wrong about the dubs being better this year. Nevertheless, a lot will need to change if Golden State is going to do what they haven't been able to all year, which is separate themselves from the 500 mark plateau. Not being able to do that has been dreading them, collapsing their entire aura from prestigious to mediocre. Somehow, some way, of course, it'll be tough with the contract drama everyone's dealing with, given Draymond has one foot out the door, as he said to Taylor Rooks, but somehow, some way, this team has to both individually and collectively regain their confidence, not just for one game, but they've got to have the mental stamina to sustain it, because if they don't show that, I'll have no choice but to label this year's Dubs roster as a whole as, quite frankly, soft. Talent, capability, and effort aren't the problems here per se. It's the game within the game that's hurting the dubs. They're letting their head downs for the slightest second, which is the moment when other teams capitalize. As we saw Sunday, they don't have the mental toughness or poise to make plays down the stretch, at least not consistently, while they did do that against Cleveland the game before. Then again, they had Ty Jerome out there for that Cavs matchup, which proves my point. He should have been playing versus Brooklyn. In addition to this team not being able to close out games properly for head-scratching reasons, because this is a mostly veteran ball club. Most prominently, it's the defense which needs to be more stable from the perimeter in terms of not allowing easy blow-bys through to the paint in terms of being on a string with their rotations and generally their help. That starts with the basics, communication, attention to detail, and a persistent will to strike through, facts which Steph Curry talks a lot about if you watch his post-game interviews. At the end of the day, I could make all the points in the world. Really, it's going to be about this team looking themselves in the mirror. Specifically with this part, I'm talking to Draymond. He's going to have to ask himself as a man if he's willing to let this punch on Jordan Poole be the storyline that'll go down in history, which ended the Dubs dynasty. Is he willing to live with that when he's on the Lakers next year is a question he has to face. I personally, after his 40-minute apology at least, expected to see a new Draymond in terms of his ego taking a step back significantly, almost being like a Serge Ibaka type guy in terms of his locker room presence and persona. Green's play has been exceptional this year, but what'll determine how successful the Warriors will be for the rest of this year and into the postseason is Draymond making a complete mindset change strictly regarding his approach to his voice in the locker room. This hangover isn't completely on Draymond, but the complacency may have stemmed from a certain leaked telegraphic, an unfortunate happenstance that maybe hasn't been embraced or acknowledged to the fullest extent among anyone, even amongst the Warriors play-by-play -play guys who didn't ask about the situation when Bob Myers came on with them. I'd like to see Coletta and Bob Fitzgerald have Myers back on so they can talk about what went down instead of using the sympathy tactic. Nevertheless, the punch continues to loom in the background of a once untouchable dub system. The wreckage has been obvious and so is the sweeping under the rug of it. Who's most to blame for the dub's potential complacency? Two shoutouts from my last video and this one next time.